Hi, I'm Marilyn Klein, President and Owner of Fiberglass Developments. Hi, I'm Scott Campbell, Sales and Operations Manager at Fiberglass Developments. In the spring of 1994, I was contacted by the Premix Corporation to assist the University of Akron in building an all-composite super mileage race car. Although we typically are not fabricators, I agreed to provide a fabrication leader in exchange for being able to videotape the entire process of building the car. Premix, Goodyear, and Fiberglass Developments all participated in financial support of the car and are proud to have been part of this unique educational project. The essence of the super mileage competition is a race among vehicles all obtaining in excess of 1,000 miles per gallon of fuel. Our goal was to assist the students and faculty in building a light and efficient composite car to compete in this race. I was the fabrication leader and guided the team of engineering students through the process of design, construction, and fabrication of their composite car. The process of building the plug through completing the finished shell took about six months and is edited into two videos. This is the first video and here we demonstrate the steps of building a large plug and the advanced mold making techniques required for full scale applications. The second video in this series demonstrates vacuum bagging techniques and the sandwich core construction used to build the graphite honeycomb shell. The University of Akron College of Polymer Science requested that we assist the College of Mechanical Engineering in building the composite shell. The mechanical engineering students would then be responsible for adding the engine, steering, and all of the other components of the car. We thank the University of Akron Visual Services Department for shooting all of the in-process footage that you see in these videos. The car that we built was intended to be an evolution of an existing metal frame car. Our goal was to eliminate the metal frame and create a vehicle which was lightweight yet strong enough without the frame to support all the loads of the car. This included all the systems as well as the driver. As I began the project, I knew in my mind's eye what the finished car would look like. I knew that the shape of the new car would have to be rounder and more uniform on the outside surface than the old car. It would also have to be slightly taller and wider because we needed to use 27-inch bicycle wheels instead of the 20-inch wheels used previously. The cockpit needed three feet of legroom for the driver as well as a windscreen which provided 180 degrees of vision from right to left. As a result, the shell of the car would have this basic shape. We needed to create a model which had the exact shape of the finished car. This model is called the plug. From the plug, we would pull two female molds. These molds would then be used to make a top and bottom shell for the car. As we begin construction of the plug, you'll want to keep in mind that we are following the same outline as demonstrated in our video, The Seven Steps of Molding Fiberglass. If you are new to molding and need a more concise explanation of the process, you might wish to review that video. This video and its sister do assume that the viewer is at an advanced level in hand laminating composites. The first step of mold making is developing the plug. In many cases, such as this one, there is no existing shape available to use as the plug, and it will have to be created from scratch. Before we begin construction, however, there are three rules to remember in all plug construction. First, the plug must be geometrically identical to your desired finished part. Second, the surface of your plug must be absolutely perfect. There can be no flaws, pinholes, or dull spots, as these will transfer directly to your mold and then to your parts. Third and finally, the plug form needs to be strong enough to support the molding materials before they cure and not distort during construction. Remember, the key to successful molding is to create a perfect plug. It doesn't matter what type of materials are used or how inexpensively the plug is made, but it must meet these three criteria. A plug as large as the one demonstrated in this video might be archived so that if additional molds were necessary, the master plug would always be available. If you know that the plug will be saved for future use, build it even sturdier so it will survive multiple vigorous mold releases. When a plug needs to be created entirely from scratch, the first step is to lay out your design. Design engineering with composites is beyond the scope of this video, but I will outline some helpful hints based on my experience throughout the process. The car had to meet the basic parameters stated above in the introduction. 
Provisions were also made for steering and braking systems, the drive line, axles, motor mounts, and safety systems. When construction began, many of these accessory systems had not yet been engineered, so I had to design a platform that left the students as many options as possible. These types of requirements affect the size and shape of the plug, but there are additional considerations as well. You must anticipate your molding process. In this case, we need the car to have a smooth outer shape while using sandwich cores inside to add stiffness. To achieve this, we had to construct two open female molds. Ultimately, the molds need to be released from this plug, so you must plan to divide the plug at a point which does not create any negative angles. A negative angle occurs when an area below your mold seam is wider than the area at the parting line. You have to anticipate this when you design your plug and make sure that no negative angles exist. Do not count on the molds flexing enough to release around a negative angle. They will not. If negative angles are unavoidable, the mold will have to be constructed in several more sections. The second thing to anticipate is the ultimate layup of parts. Trapped air in the mold or in the parts results from either inadequate saturation or resin and reinforcement pulling away from surfaces that they can barely reach. You want to avoid right angles and tight corners in your design where air pockets can form. As you can see from this later shot of the rear of the plug, I tapered the curves as much as possible to avoid this. Finally, the vacuum bagging lamination method used to construct the final parts also meant that a wider than average parting flange be incorporated into the molds as the point of attachment for the vacuum bag. This required only minor modification to the existing part of the mold. After you have completed your design, you're ready to start building the plug. The second step of plug making is to build a sturdy frame. The size of the Akron vehicle made carving the plug from one solid block of material impractical, so a framework was constructed to provide the basic three-dimensional shape. Full-scale, cross-sectional views were cut out of drafting paper and glued to plywood sheets. These cross-sections were the bulkheads, which made up the exact outer surface of the plug. To orient and support them properly, slots were cut in both the bulkheads and in longer framing boards. This allowed the bulkheads to rest in the frame precisely located along the axis of the car. The plywood is the first outline of the plug. Earlier, centered holes were drilled 20 inches from the base of each piece of plywood. These holes accept a large dowel rod which supports the tops of the bulkheads and helps them to remain in position. After gluing the plywood and the frame together, the rod was inserted. Notice that the framework is all internal and will not affect the surface of the plug.